Welcome to the Jenkins Docs Office Hours EU edition. Uh, today is September 22nd. We have uh, quite a few items on our uh, agenda today. We have some action items that Mark and I will give some updates for. Uh, we have just a quick mention of DevOps tw World 2022, which is next week. Um, we have the upcoming October LTS release. The uh, weekly release line needs to be reviewed with DevOps World happening next week. I'll be uh, kind of he heading that one. Uh, and then we have an item for the Hacktoberfest documentation efforts that uh, we have available that we're planning on sharing with the project and the event. So um, let's get started. Um, is there any other items that we should add to the list before we get started actually? I don't have any. Okay. Then uh, as far as the action items go, um, Mark, any updates on the ones under your name? Yeah, so upcoming blog post, I propose to drop that action item completely uh, and just admit that I've failed. My blog posts are not going to happen for those topics. Um, between, between DevOps world and then vacation time I'm taking after DevOps world, it's just too late. We'll need to do a DevOps World Contributor Summit blog post or multiple blog posts, and that'll be the better approach. Yeah, makes sense, and uh, well deserved time off as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, on that note, uh, I we had a blog post that was published on Monday that I wrote regarding our Digital Ocean sponsorship. Uh, Digital Ocean is. Uh, the organizer and main sponsor of Hacktoberfest, and they actually uh, just recently granted us a uh, just over eighteen thousand dollar sponsorship. With uh, which, in addition to their earlier sponsorship this year, brings us to just over twenty thousand. Big, big, big thank you to DigitalOcean for all of their sponsorship and uh, assistance and dedication for uh, making to help make Jenkins as great as possible. Um, we also have a blog post that was recently published for by uh, Jean-Marc, who has created a, a little post about the Hacktoberfest 2022 event, going over just how we're getting ready and gearing up for it. Um, you can see there it's uh, called Preptember, which is exciting. And uh, yeah, a couple of weeks left before that actually finishes out and we start. Uh, and then one of the biggest things, uh, we actually have published the adopt and improve plugin tutorial. The, there's a blog post showcasing that. Uh, and this is going to be the content that's used during the uh, DevOps world workshop. So uh, firsthand experience, big thank you to Mark and Diraj and everyone who contributed to this. Um, this has been a long time coming and a process that was started since DevOps world last year. So uh, having it finally come to fruition is really, really nice to see. and. Uh, just it says it just goes a long way of uh in reinforcing the uh community aspect and ha having people uh join in to the com the contributions as they can and we received our first and merged our first pull request to improve it we're already on the right path fantastic okay uh mark did you want to have it did it was there any other notes you wanted to share about the tutorial or no uh, just okay. encourage people to use it remind them that it's a it's a candidate to give good, it gives good suggestions for things that you can do confidently and that are valuable for Hacktoberfest. Awesome. And uh, yeah, as a newer Jenkins user, uh, for me, adopting a plugin seemed very daunting. That tutorial made everything easy. I just had to make sure that I was following the steps and taking my time with it. So uh, a little patience goes a long way here. Yeah, same for me. I, I was uh, really scared. Of, I don't want to adopt the plugin, even if. That would be fine. And now, after trying uh, the steps described in this tutorial for a few plugins, I could become maybe uh, <laughs> a maintainer <laughs> for one plugin. That's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it definitely takes some of the scariness away for it. So, uh, yeah, very, very it's, much so. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, so that. nicely detailed. And yeah, it really helps. That's a fantastic job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, next up on our list, uh, just again, mention that DevOps World 2022 is happening next week, which is oh, September really? 27th to the 29th. <laughs> I know, surprise, Bruno. Oh, right. out, of nowhere. out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
that does also mean that with uh, nearly everyone on the community team being uh, at DevOps World next week, uh, most of the events have been canceled, if not all of them have been canceled. That does include Docs Office Hours. Uh, we have already shared that information with the Asia uh, Docs Office Hours uh, participants and wanted to make sure that that was brought up here as well. So next Thursday, uh, we will not have Docs Office Hours. It will, however, start back up the week after uh, and will be really just getting into Hacktoberfest at the at that point in time. So it's going to be really exciting and uh, all new. So uh, definitely keep posted on that. Uh, next uh, next month, coming up in a couple of weeks, we also have our 2.361.2 uh, LTS release. So that'll be happening on October 5th. Uh, I've created a change log and upgrade guide entry for this. It's available and open for feedback and suggestions. Uh, if you have a chance, take a look, see if there's anything that um, might need updating or any kind of changing, please, by all means. Uh, I'm more than happy to work and figure that all out. Uh, on the release li line note, um, I'm also starting to do the weekly release line reviews. Um, this past this week we had two uh, two point three seven zero, which was a security release. Uh, so we're already keeping eyes on next week for two point three seven one, and the pull request for the change log already has an update to it. So uh, we'll I'll be keeping an eye on that. And uh, while everyone is at DevOps World, I'll be reviewing and editing that as we go. Um, I'll be out uh, towards the end of the week next week as well. So I'll make sure this is taken care of before uh, I head out so that no worries, no uh, anything left hanging after the fact. Uh, and finally, the biggest piece of the agenda today, uh, Hectoberfest is coming up in a couple of weeks. Mark and I have been working uh, alongside the community and everyone uh, in Docs Office Hours to go through and confirm the issues that we wanna have and make sure that the uh, topics available are uh, spanning both Jenkins and non-Jenkins experience uh, and documentation otherwise, et cetera. Um, the, it's a really a cornucopia of ideas and uh, we, we just really are excited to have people join up and participate. Um, again, the two set of topics are good first issues where no Jenkins experience is required uh, this will include things like uh, uh, updating some uh, of the documentation based on current versions, uh, making sure that the sections are in the correct order, more uh, low level or low impact uh, documentation work. And then we also have the Hacktoberfest section, which is going to include uh, topics that have a little bit more Jenkins experience involvement. So. Um, not necessarily going to be for the everyone, but if someone does have Jenkins experience, we want to make sure that they can leverage that to their advantage and, you know, uh, make a meaningful kind of contribution if that's what they're looking to do. So uh, we'll be continuing to refine this a little bit more as we go along. Uh, but for the most part, we do have the topics uh, categorized and labeled. So uh, pretty much what's there is going to continue to be there as we move towards Hacktoberfest. Uh, there's also going to be an option for plugin document documentation migration. Uh, this is specifically the plugin documentation, not the wiki migration. Uh, and this is a great opportunity for folks because we have uh, plugins that are maintained or owned right now by Mark, Jean-Marc, and Bruno. Um, so using these as the first uh, choice plugins, these are going to be reviewed and maintained by people that are active right now. So the pull requests are going to get actioned upon. Uh, other plugins that have maintainers that, while they might be interested in Oktoberfest, may not uh, want their plugin being uh, part of this. So uh, whereas others are going to have the Oktoberfest label on their plugin, this is the place where you can submit to those uh, those maintainers. However. Uh, if they are not active, if for whatever reason they just don't get a chance to review the pull request within the month of October, uh, it's going to just sit there. So we want to try and avoid that uh, limbo as much as possible for all the pull requests. So uh, we have a migration report that lists all the plugins that need to be migrated. We have the documentation page that describes the task. And um, Mark, will we have a list or 
um, what, it's going to be the easiest way for people to make sure that the plugin's a good choice, uh, maybe owned by yourself, Bruno or Jean-Marc? It's a, it's a good question. So I think the, if you look at that um, worksheet sorted by various attributes down at the bottom of mm -hmm. the list, let's open that and let's talk about to see what, because maybe it's as simple as we put this one. Is, is this the topic you were thinking, Kevin? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or just, are you I was thinking just... more generally in plugins to which you should contribute, not the documentation task? Yeah, um, so I was thinking more so uh, we have the first choice of you, Jean-Marc and Bruno having the plugins. The second mm -hmm. choice is asking maintainers to review. Um, I was thinking, is there a place that has uh, these ones specifically listed so that we know for sure which ones to contribute to versus um, is it going to be a matter of searching for the repositories or plugins uh, during Hacktoberfest and then contributing to those and uh, or checking with the maintainers and then contributing. Okay, yeah, I put I in the chat the link that we created the other day, you know, Mark, the spreadsheet. I don't know if we should share this one, but that's our reference for the time being. Oh, good. Yeah, let's, so oh, let's open that one and see. Oh. Yeah, so this is, this is the sheet that we'll be using in the workshop to, okay. to decide, okay, who's adopting what? And we could easily open it up and say, hey, we'll let anybody... Uh, make a comment on this sheet proposing to adopt it. Okay. And that can be, obviously that can be done after DevOps world. So we're not. Um, yeah. So meshing this, anything. This is a, yeah, the list of the plugins will be on the deck ready to um, merge pull requests or make some reviews and so on. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. So all of those will be perfectly active and we can then just use that as a basis essentially. Right. Yeah. The, okay. So the, the, the thought was, hey, let's here's here's a list of plugins that we know the maintainers are willing to review pull requests. Now these are these are willing to review pull requests of a more general nature, right? These pull requests are not just docs transformation. They're they're anything, for example, anything in that modernize a plugin tutorial would be a good candidate for these. Awesome. Yeah, and I can see like the GitLab authentication and a couple of the other the other ones I didn't see as far as documentation goes. So yeah, um, I see where having this just be available as for the community would be nice to have as just in, informative pur purposes at the end of the day. Yeah, now, now to the question, which ones are doc doc migration? Kevin, if you'll open up, I'm going to paste another URL for you to open and. Let's okay. look at it because I'm I'm not entirely sure that that if we want to have a list for the docs migration tasks specifically, mm -hmm. we probably ought to use. Well, actually, why am I doing this? Go back to the go back to the sheet that was there before the, uh, yeah, that one. Yep. This one is specific to docs migration. Okay. And right. and the reason, let's see, let me make it let me make it editable to you, but. but the reason that the specific to docs migration might matter is what I was looking, what I was seeking was which plugins seem like the maintainers are more likely to be willing to uh, evaluate a pull request. Mm -hmm. And my guess on which ones they were, would be more likely to evaluate is which ones have the newer release date. Right. So this is sorted by date of release. Oh, okay. with count of installs on the right, but not, it's ignoring count of installs. And, okay. and for me, that was, okay, the, for instance, the deployment notification plugin released less than a month ago. Mm -hmm. so somebody was working on that thing less than a month ago and may be willing to review pull requests. Right. But, but right. then we've, we've still got to reach out, contact them and say, are you willing to do that? Okay. And that means we've got to dig out their email address and that's, that may not even be feasible for some of them because some mm -hmm. of them, the maintainer may have only published their Jenkins username, not their email address. Ah, okay. And if they haven't looked at Jenkins in a while or GitHub, uh, they might not see those notifications just to their user. Right, right. We could certainly ask a question on the plugin on the, you know, as in a plugin pull request or something like that. But uh, if they if they ignore us, 
we haven't gained much. Right. So, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, this, this cleans up very well, shows everything that I was curious about. And I think it would be a great resource for the community. Thank you. Well, but, yeah. but so, so maybe we ought to come to a decision there because I, I like, if you'd switch back to Bruno's, the sheet that Bruno had, Mm -hmm. Because that one is much more general purpose, right? This okay. one is, hey, these plugins, you can contribute if they need to. Maybe what we ought to do here is identify which of these still need documentation. And, and that's an additional thing. And we say, okay, here are ones that we know need documentation conversion. And you could, or a, the doc sig can certainly offer those exactly as translate those to to. to convert their documentation from wiki to GitHub. And Mark, uh, if ever we don't get them all modernized during the workshop, shouldn't we, after the workshop, create a series of issues for each of these plugins saying, uh, you know, labeling them with Oktoberfest uh, and modernizing, you know, the issue being modernizing the plugin? Because we are there, we can help, we can merge uh, pull requests, but People have to know what to do. So maybe we should create after the workshop, if they aren't all modernized, one issue per plugin saying, please modernize me and here is the documentation. And yes, this is a Hacktoberfest uh, um, issue. What do you think good, of that? Good suggestion. I like that. Yes, because then, okay. then we could open that issue and label it good first issue. We could even at that point, if we have a sample of that thing, we could point to it and say, look, here, you can look at this for an example. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Good suggestion. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I like that a lot too, Bruno. Thank you for bringing Thank that you. up and, and having that. That's, uh, yeah, because, and as Mark said, we can set it as good first issue. We can set up the labels on it so that it comes up as we want them to. Uh, and that would also have a little focus for the user, the person contributing where they want to go and what they want to do. So, yeah. No, I think that's a, I think that's a wonderful idea. Cool. Yeah. And Mark, so, you show us, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to tell you several of these on the list that, that have that. So row number seven, uh, conditional build step needs docs converted. No, 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 sorry. It doesn't artifact deployer, which is a little further down. Oh, okay. So what this hints is probably most of these have already got their documentation updated. Artifact Deployer is definitely one that needs it. I know it does. Others I'm not as sure of, and in the top six or seven, none of them need it. So this list may not actually be a great choice for, for the, the pure docs focus. We could, could we still do something like that with these, Mark? Or would that just be too much at this point because there's a lot oh, more no, plugins no, we, on here? We we certainly can any one of these. The challenge with the challenge with this list is mm -hmm. we don't have control of these repositories, so we can't merge the proposed change. Whereas right. the other list, Bruno, John, Mark, and I are reviewers on it, and we can merge the changes immediately. Right. Okay. At least we'll know so we can share that with people. And mm -hmm. I think we'll be okay at the end of the day. I don't think that's going to deter anyone or anything from happening during our Hacktoberfest. But yeah. yeah, these are all just, I'm just curious. Thank you for sharing all that. I appreciate it. And I think that helps clarify a lot for all of us that uh, like what we're going to be able to do and achieve it. Uh, Mark, you showed us earlier today in the Outreach Advocacy SIG meeting a link that would list all the kind of contributions people can make to during Hacktoberfest for Jenkins. And some of them were translation, for example. Uh, could you please share once more that link? Because I thought that it was well written. All the list of things that people could do. Would translation uh, be valid for Hacktoberfest? and documentation uh, SIG? I mean, is this a subject we should address in here in documentation SIG or not at all? It's I, not I, office hour. I, I don't, it's not that it's not well suited to office hours, okay. but rather, well, let's let's have Kevin open it first and let's look at it. So Kevin, open up a new tab to Jenkins.io. Yep. So 
Sorry if I muddy the water. <laughs> no, no, that's, this is great. So now if you look under, I think it's under Community Hacktoberfest. Uh, no, would, okay, would try. Events? Uh, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Great. So yes, so here we go. So as you, as you scroll down, mm -hmm. what you'll see is here is a list of issue queries and then featured projects. And between those two lists, the list of issue queries and the list of feature projects. So if mm -hmm. you click good first issues on GitHub, we should see the, it's yeah, the very bottom most one. This okay. will give you issues from all sorts of repositories in Jenkins CI and Jenkins Infra. Mm -hmm. And, and these, are, these are issues not just spe not specific to documentation, but in fact, fact related to anything as an issue on that plugin. Now go back to that page, because mm -hmm. then if we look at the Jenkins website, let's see, there's not one there. Okay, maybe Kevin, this is one we ought to update. Okay. So here what you see is it says, hey, here it offers some suggestions of ways you can contribute, but it does, oh no, there it is, the good first issues link. So, so on is the... It? Sort of the top right center, into, yeah. right hand side. Oh, oh, yeah, right there, there it is. There you go. So this one shows good first issues, and there are currently 13 open. Mm -hmm. Now we may want to mutate this to be good first issue. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's actually a good choice. Because any one of these that someone decides they're going to, to work. We are willing to label it Hacktoberfest, right? If if they do it during October, we can certainly label it Hacktoberfest. If if that's a concern for them, we say, hey, why why isn't it labeled Hacktoberfest? Good, okay. So back to that page. So okay, so Jenkins website is one documentation location. As you scroll downwards, then there are others. And I think we've got one further down that talks about, yeah, here's a good one, non-inclusive terminology cleanup. All right, this one is a, needs a sweep across all sorts of places looking for non-inclusive terminology. So I'm not sure we want this one in our, in this particular page. It's mm -hmm. just too complicated for a new contributor to find those locations successfully. Most of the easy ones are already done. And it's a common pattern for, for a contributor to attempt something and not realize that what they're doing is completely flawed and will break, break things much worse than if they'd just done nothing. So, so this, could you make a note? We just need to be sure we delete that from, yes. from the list because we don't really want to, to ask people to do things that, where they are unlikely to succeed. The inclusive naming also, I know this has come up before. Uh, it's not as simple as just replacing the words. It also has to deal with the context around the words. So it's not just as easy as replacing things, which would be great. But yeah, in this case, it's a little yes. a little bit more involved or difficult. We've seen that with Chico de Fucra this year, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and by with direct coaching, they were successful, but it required direct coaching and an awful lot of interaction to assure that they didn't make mistakes that would cause the plugin maintainers to say this pull request is is a harm harmful not helpful okay so, so keep going downwards going? kevin okay there it was plugin uh, docs on github so <laughs> that was the one where we might yeah see i'm okay so could you try opening the the GitHub good first issues link that's on that row, I suspect it's no better than, oh no, 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 it is better. This one's really got good first issues in documentation. Okay, back to the page again, and let's do one more check. So this time the newcomer friendly issues link that's right next to it. Yeah, and that one, okay, those those are reasonable, but probably, yeah, okay, and that's not a that's not a bad list. Okay, good, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then 
Yeah, there's um, there's this section specifically for French translation, which is what Bruno had meant, or not specifically the French, but this there is one for this translation specifically, and then some internationalization documentation. Um, I also know that we have Crowd and Enterprise too. So, uh, and I know, like, I, if I recall, there was uh, questions before about how to make sure people get uh, credit or recognized for the translations they're doing. And that's a part that I'm not. I haven't read the, the the Hacktoberfest instructions well enough to understand how things that are not submitted as pull requests to a GitHub repository can be counted. Bruno, maybe you can give us an overview of how they how do they do that accounting? How do I how do I tell them I submitted a translation through CrowdIn? That's a problem. For the time being, I haven't read the um, detailed uh, ah, details okay. of that. I don't know because they also talked about writing a blog post. Um, mm -hmm. doing a presentation. So how will they count that as an issue which is linked to Actoberfest? I don't know yet. I have yet to find the right documentation that details all of that for the time being. I don't know where it is, if it ever exists. <laughs> got it. Okay, so so you've got the same open question I do. Is, mm -hmm. is for me, the French translation topic is is interesting if a team were to decide as a group, hey, we want to work on French, or we want to work on German, or Italian, or Spanish, or Brazilian Portuguese. Any one of those would be would be great, um, but it sort of needs a, it needs more than one person. This really isn't well suited to a single individual um, approaching it because there there are likely some problems hiding here that will have to be discovered and resolved. Yeah, and there may be some prerequisite too, because you were talking about uh, crowding, uh, Kevin, and somebody has to configure that in the plugin before starting the translation. So, <laughs> exactly. Yes. And my second question was uh, can we address that subject within that documentation office hours? Because it's linked to documentation, but it's not really documentation. Yeah, I, I think it, it's a good topic for office hours. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to make significant progress on it in time for Hacktoberfest. Of course, because we have to find the maintainers to accept our first uh, pull request for going to Crowdin. And we have, first of all, to convince them this is useful for the plugin. And so, no, right. I don't have any expectations. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. And, um, and, uh, Bruno, too, uh, someone actually else has brought up the translation stuff during our Hacktoberfest prep meeting. So um, that is something that other people have been considering. Uh, it doesn't it hasn't come up as part of the docs topic specifically. It's kind of considered mm -hmm. its own thing. Um, and they had similar questions. So, yeah, I think it's something that is a little uh, maybe outside of the scope to some degree, but not that doesn't mean we can't bring it in and talk about it. And like Mark said, discuss, we can we can do what we can, but uh, making progress yeah. might be a little bit more difficult. Got it. So thank you. Yeah. Um, cool. Is there anything else on this page that might have had to do those those were those read that I was aware of, Kevin. Okay. Okay. Um, so in that case, I think we've gone over all of our Hacktoberfest information. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add on that, Mark, or anything that you wanted to share? Nothing else for me. Nothing for me either. Thank you. Okay, fair enough. I appreciate that. Um, if that's the case, is there anything else that we would like to be brought up today in our meeting? If not, great. Um, we'll stop the recording in a minute. The recording will be available in 24 or 48 hours. Uh, and as always, thank you to everyone for all the hard work and joining. Um, there's been, there's newest contributions coming through every day. And uh, I'm very happy that I get to be a part of this and help with the community. So thank you everyone, thank you. always. Thank you.